All right. What we're doing here today is uh, we're going to case skin a coyote. A lot of people have been, been requesting case skinning. And it's going to be for taxidermy, so that means I'll leave the feed in and all that. And the reason I'm going to case skin it is because some people like to stuff the forms in from the back or cut them up dorsal cut it. This is a dorsal cut down the back. Now if I knew this was going to be used, I'm going to sell this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to skin it, flesh it, and dry it and get it ready for sale to show you how to do that. But anyway, uh, first we're going to get some measurements on him. On her, I should say. It's a big female coyote. We're going to measure right from the corner of the eye here to the tip of the nose, which is three and three quarters, which is about average size for a female coyote. I'll write that down, three and three quarter by, and we'll measure the length of her. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure all the way from the base of the tail, you can feel it right here, just go all the way up around her head down to the tip of her nose. I'm going to call her 35 inches. So we'll write that down to 35. <laughs> that way I'll have this written down, I can remember it. By 35. I'm going to put female. Because I got a male down here that I did a few days back. So. But well, we didn't videotape him. So I'm going to get some of this stuff out of the way so we can see here. We're going to get him ready to, to uh, do. I'm going to sharpen the knife here quick. We're going to cut relief cuts in the feet. We're going to skin the back feet out. Back foot out. I'm going to turn, turn her around a little bit so we can see this. Okay. I had her hanging up to get the, the letter. She'd been in a creek and she was pretty wet, so I wanted to get her dry. That's predators or fur bearing game. What you want to do before you freeze them, you want to make sure they're completely dry, otherwise, your hair will slip. So, on the front feet, we're going to do a relief cut. I go right at the middle of the pad and go right up the leg till the, to the elbow. And that way, when I get out in here skinning, I can get this thing skinned out pretty darn easy. If you don't make a relief cut, I know it's a little bit more sewing, but if you don't make that relief cut, trying to get down here, peel the skin down is very hard. So, and whether you're selling to a fur buyer or, or whatever, this, these relief cuts don't hurt. And I go right up to the elbow. Now the back feet do the same thing. We're going to go all the way up from here, the pad, all the way up around to the butt, go around the butt, and all the way back down to this side. Make sure you don't cut these tendons because we might we're gonna hang her up in these tendons and get her up in the air where I can skin her and pull it down. So what we're doing is we're just gonna go ahead and get this here. You see her butt there. I'm gonna get in here with my knife. And make sure you have a sharp knife, it makes a big difference. If you got a knife that feels like it's slicing through butter, that's good. See that I'm gonna go right right up around her butt right here. That way we'll skin that down and whoever buys this will be able to sell that that way. Or mount it up and it'll be a good you'll be able to look at the rear end of it and you won't see anything out of the ordinary. If you cut a big patch out of there around the butt, I leave the anus in there because that's more realistic when you 
get to sewing it up and showing it. If you're doing a show quality mount, they look at everything. So we're going right up here still. Gonna go right up till we get around the butt there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna skin these feet out, the back ones, till I can get them where I can hook them on the gambrel here. Now you gotta be kind of careful here because the skin is thin. You gotta be kind of careful when you're working around here. Don't be in a hurry. It just looks like I'm going fast because I've done this so many times. I can't even begin to guess the amount of coyotes I've skinned in my life, but it's it's up into several hundreds probably. I was skinning them for people and tanning them and sending them away to be tanned for a few years and ended up I was skinning two or three coyotes a day at least for a while. Maybe five on top of everything else I was doing. Finally, it just kind of got to be too much. But anyway, just kind of skin out like that. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, this type of stuff, you can cut this off here anywhere you want, but keep this tender. Some people get kind of nervous skinning. Uh, you can always sew up the holes, you know, like me. Like what I would do if I was a beginner just doing this, I'd get this thing skinned out up to the pad here, just like this. It looks a little awkward when I'm doing it, but I'm, I'm just trying to give you a good view. It would go, actually go a lot faster. Just pull that down a little. And you'll see the knuckles here on the feet, right there. What you do is you take a side cutter or a heavy duty shear and cut those. Let's see if I can get over here. And then we'll deal with them after when we get ready to do our fleshing. We'll pull those toes out. Most scissors won't cut these toes. So that's why I use a side cutter. My big side cutters I think I lost them, but they work pretty good. These littler ones are a little bit harder. But you can see how that, I'm getting that cut out there. Let's see, I think we got them all. I just got a tendon hanging here. See that? Now we got this where the tendon is. Just like that. Put a little slit in there so you can get your gambrel hook through there. Now we'll skin this one out here too. Then we'll get to we'll get to skinning this thing. I just find it easier to skin them when they're hanging up. You can see this a little bit here. I'll try to keep it over here where you can see it. Not a bad looking coyote, nice light colored. See how we're down to the toe area right there again? So, we're just going to go ahead and this is a nice, nice prime coyote. I mean, this is about as this coyote was just killed. This is the beginning. This is early February and they're in good shape uh, a lot of times they start getting rubbed this time of the year or the tails start getting thin and uh, you gotta kinda watch it otherwise you can end up with a bad hide they still make good wall hangings but the primer the better I think see I'm just pulling that down so we can get to the toes right here 
and we can cut them off. And just keep cutting till we run out of toes to cut. In most case skinning is about the same, just on a for most people this is about as big a case skinning job as they'll do. But I've case skinned bears before, but not that I wanted to, but I did. Anyway, you see that? Now we got this coyote ready to go. He's ready to hang up on the gambrel. Got the relief cuts in the front, and we've got the back legs ready to go. So, you get one of these on the hook. If I can get one on the hook, then it's a lot easier to get the other one on. Oh, come on. Okay. And then we'll put the other one on here. Well, I'll tell you what. She is one heavy coyote for a, for a female. I'll try to keep moving this down so you can see it. But here's the tail right here. Let me get my knife. But you see this tail? What we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and see what we can pull down here. Now I don't pull real hard because if you got a hole starting you could end up cutting a hole in there or tearing one. They got real thin skin around their legs here. I don't know why but coyotes and fox have real thin hide around their hind quarters. And it's very easy to make a hole right in this area here. I still do it. And I, if, even after all I've skinned, I still make that mistake once in a while. Because I don't want to leave any meat on the hide. But you pay a price for that when you end up putting a hole in it. And you can see that I'm going to work the inside of that thigh down a little bit. You gotta watch out handling your knife here. You don't want to stab yourself. You know. You pull that one way or another, stick yourself in the eye or, or whatever, you could end up getting hurt. Always be conscious of having a having your knife be real sharp. The sharper your knife the better. I like mine what I call scary sharp, where I just touch the skin like that and that just comes away. I, I like them like that. That way I don't have to put any undue pressure on it. I know where that knife is going to cut and that makes a big difference to me. Now if you skin one of these warm, you can actually pull a lot of this hide off. I'm trying to get where I can... Let's see what we got here. You just kind of keep peeling that around there. See that? I'm going to end up getting messy here. Because I... Uh, I'm trying to keep a good adva advantage point for you to see. And see, I cut a little hole right there because I didn't see. But that, that'll, that, those are so easy to hide, especially on a good prime coyote. You just put a stitch in there and it, it's hidden. So I don't get, when I do coyotes and fox, I don't get all screwed up about if I put a hole in something. I, it just don't, it just isn't worth it because it happens, you know. When you're doing this by yourself, you'll take advantage of all the other angles. See, I can't, I can only do so much because I'm trying to do for the camera here. But anyway, we're going to go around this tail here. We're, we're cut right here. And let's see, I know we've got to 
got a cut on this side somewhere. So I'm going to keep skinning down here until I find out where our, our cut is. And I think it's right here. And then we'll find out. There we go. Now we're cooking. Can you see that? I'm making, I'm looking at the camera here, making sure that you can see just about what I'm doing anyway. But anyway, I'm going to go around and meet this cut right here. And there's her butt. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down here and, and watch yourself doing this. I'm going to make a split up the tail here, just a little ways. that tail out of there in a little bit but now we're gonna work on this side here. You see how I just barely touch that membrane area and that stuff just breaks away. That's what you want your knife to do. You want your knife to be scary sharp. Now I'm at the tail here. I'm going to be careful. And I, I'm cutting under the tail here on both sides. You see how I got that tail? What we're going to do is we're going to cut this tail off. And if you're lucky enough to hit a joint, you can cut it off with the knife. Like that. If you don't, then you got to use your side cutters to cut it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work this rear end over the top. We've got to get it cut loose here. There's the anus. And we're going to go ahead and grab it like this so you can see what's going on. We're going to cut that loose. We'll have some fleshing to do around that. Now just uh, we'll get this loose right here. Try that. She's kind of slippery. And don't worry about. Uh, I'm gonna go to the door and see if I, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this over like this get her where I can see it on this side. Put a lot of pressure on there and just start cutting the line. See that? And there we go. You see she's obviously been shot. So what I do here is if I get an area like that, that I obviously going to start leaking some blood, I'll just go ahead and cover it like that with a paper towel. And that'll keep it somewhat clean for a little while. Sometimes you hit those that just gush blood all over. You see how I'm doing? Let me move this down a little bit. Just gonna keep going down. Keep putting pressure on that hide and you can kind of see she's fat as a hog. Usually this time of the year they're running a little bit lean, but evidently she's been finding stuff to eat. Now, another place to really watch where your skin is the belly area here. That hide is so thin here that it's just uh you just can't believe how thin it is. It's real thin. So you gotta be very careful. Otherwise, you'll cut a cut a hole in it. You want to make sure you keep plenty of pressure on it. That way, you can see these membranes here. 
but you got to stay right close to the meat there. But like I say, if you put a hole in there, it's no big, no big deal. It's uh, a lot of people get screwed up over that. They they think they ruin a hide when they put a hole in there, and you don't. You just got to sew it. And that's all there is to it. And that's no big deal. But this here, the skin is right tight to the belly. There's no, there's no slack in there. It seems like. I'm gonna see. You see how I'm pulling that? Let me move this down some more. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get a seat and sit. And see if that'll go. Get a little bit comfortable here. And I'll see if I can see what I'm doing. Let me see how that just kind of pulls off in there. Working her slow. I say some somebody's gonna buy this hide, and uh, I want them to not have to do a lot of work on it. The clint, the better job you do skinning it, the you can get a premium price for it. You just tell them it's well skinned. It's that skin for taxidermy, and. Uh, I mix because she's prime, she's taxidermy quality. Everything is going to be ready to go. All they're going to have to do is tan it and uh, order your form up. They don't have hardly anything to do. Or they can send it away to be tanned. Just keep pulling that down like that. You see this white membrane? That's kind of what you want to see. You just touch that and it just comes loose. See that? We're going to be coming over to this side now. You see we're right in the breast here. You got to be careful because this breast is thin too. You can leave the some meat on there if you're, you're not comfortable because you're going to flesh that off anyway. So, what we're going to do is try to pull this down over these front feet. There we go. Make sure we're low enough here. Keep, keep getting lower. And always wear gloves when you're doing uh, predator animals. I do. They're the ones that seem to I carry most of the disease anyway. Not all of them, but they do carry some, and you're better off being safe. So I, I, I try to wear gloves when I do predators. And that's, that includes raccoons. In fact, I use gloves for about everything most of the time anymore. I don't for deer, I guess. Sometimes I do, but sometimes I don't. I figure deer are pretty darn clean. I've never tried eating coyote, but somebody told me they weren't too bad. I uh, have to get a little bit more hungry before I try her. You see how I'm just bringing this down? 
We're getting down on the shoulders here now. So I'm going to pull this down some more. And you got to be kind of careful when you get into this area here. This area here is up in the throat area. Very easy to cut holes in this area here because you got folded skin and that. If you don't take your time, you'll end up uh, cutting holes in it. Now this is the arm here. We're right down at the arm. So we're just taking our time here because I know if I go too fast here I'm gonna put a hole in this shoulder area. It looks like you got a few BB holes here already, so I'll make sure I don't make any more. That's not a good saying I won't, but what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to get in here and see if I can get a grip on something I can. There's some blood in that so you put your thumb in here you can usually pull that down. And don't worry about leaving this meat. I'm going to leave that meat because I know that if I try to get too cute here I'll end up putting a hole in this thing. Uh, this is not. And if I keep working it slow, I can get down here. I'll be able to get a finger through here and I can get that out of there. But I gotta make sure I don't get too cute trying to do some of this other stuff. And you know when you cut it, because the hair just pops right on out. Anyway. <clears throat> we're getting real close to where I'm going to go ahead and move the camera. And we're going to pull on this thing. And get her to where we can, uh... Well, let's see. I'm going to see if I can get a finger through here. Like I was talking about, sometimes you have to just dig. Hmm. Where's the phone? Again. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to pull this guy up. I'm going to move the camera. I'm going I'm to show you how I work this hide now. I'm going to get him up in the air here a little bit. I'm going to put some pressure on him. Like this here. I'm going to move this around a little bit more. close to where we can get through here and see daylight to the other side. I'm almost there now, so. See, I got through to the other side, right here. So I can work this leg now. Remember, we made our relief cuts up here to the elbow. So, by all right, after I get this here done, down here a little bit, I want to be able to, I can see the hide right here. 
So I'm just going to grab this hide. Start pulling it down. You see that? And if you're real strong, you can pull that. Look, I'm not real strong today. Pulling that loose. Yeah, that popped out of there from down below. Now we gotta finish skinning this out because we didn't skin these front feet out, remember? We just went ahead and split them on up. Baby. The only thing you gotta watch here now is your dew claw. I'm gonna get the side cutters. And when we get to this dew claw, like I'll show you here. Just keep working it down. end up with your dew claw right here. So you cut that off. And then you can come back here and pull, pull this down to the knuckles or skin it out down to these knuckles right here and cut them off. And we'll come back later when we flesh it, we've got some other things to do. We're going to get this done. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, put them in the fridge or in the fridge overnight. And then we'll finish the flushing. We've got the flushing room out already. So, you see how that did, did that? So there we go. We got that, that one done. Now, let's see if we can get this other side done. See how that's been a kind of... I think we can get through there now. See daylight. Got through there. Now we're skinning this foot. This foot. Oh. Do the same thing, just stay in the white. Keep seeing the white. I'm making sure you can see this. Just keep pulling that down. Right, so you've about ready to come out this paw. So. Here's that dew claw I was talking about. Skinning is kind of tough work. I mean, you're doing a lot of pulling and yanking and stuff like that. If 
Here's that dew paw right there. Just cut that right at that joint there. And that'll make it much easier to skin out. Otherwise you run into that knuckle and it doesn't skin out with the darn. Hi Toby. Most of you know Toby. He's a pretty good old cat. He's been my buddy for a lot of years in here. Some dummy dropped him off. Perfectly good cat. Most of our cats and dogs have been dropped off for fun to pound. We try to help them all out. We've done had about everything here for animals. Trying to fix them up and get them back to where they have a decent life. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do the head here. What's the matter, Toby? Come on, coyote. Now you see, underneath there, you have to be kind of careful. I know, buddy. You already ate. Now, if you cut the juggler vein here, you'll have a mess. If he didn't bled out already. It runs right up here it is, right here. So be kind of gingerly around that. Because man, I've had that stuff come out. If it's I'm working high, come out and hit you right in the face. And that's not very good. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm putting a little more tension on this. You see that juggler on this side right here, that dark line, it looks like it's full of blood too, so I'm going to be kind of careful on that. I mean, it's no biggie if you cut it, it just makes your hide a little bit more messier. It goes right up under the ear. tension on that eye, it really works good. You see how the white, when I pull that, shows you right where to cut. Like this stuff here. And make sure you have a strong enough rope holding your stuff up. You don't want to be wearing a coyote here. Especially when it's about half skin. <laughs> Make for a heck of a mess. And then, what we got to do is you got to figure out where your ear is. Here's the ear right here. I can feel the ear canal. So I want to cut down there. Right there's the ear. And you want to get to the base of that ear. And here's the base over here. So you can cut plenty deep there. Doesn't matter. It'll start coming loose. Sometimes you can get your finger in there and use it for a finger hole, <laughs> which works out pretty good. And we're gonna boil this skull out because the guy wants it. He shot it between the eyes with the 22 to kill it. And he thought the hide would look neat, or the skull would look neat with the hole in it. Hopefully it didn't shatter the skull. Sometimes they do. But a 22, see how that's stretching there? 
and we're getting down around the eyeballs. So we gotta kinda watch it. Here's the eyes right here. So just stay close to the head like this when you're cutting. And that way you won't have to worry about cutting eyelids off, things like that. Stay real close. We stretch that a lot that way when it does cut through there. Uh oh, I lost the edge on my knife. Sometimes you'll hit a bullet fragment or something, and that'll do it. Or a tooth. You, you see how I'm kind of working that. Some kind of a hole there. Get a hole in that eye, and then I could put your finger right in that eyelid and cut just like, just like that. Can you see that? That's the way you want to do that. I can feel bullet fragments, so that's what's causing that. You got a collapsed eyeball here. So what's 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 doing it? That eyeball is collapsed, and it makes it doubly difficult to to find your eyelid. So I'm gonna go cut and clear it up in here. Make sure I, I don't screw up that eyelid. And we'll clean that up when we do our flushing. Oh, my knife just went to heck here. I don't, I don't know if it was the teeth or what. But I, I felt a couple bullet fragments there. So I don't know what happened there. Man, that, Took the edge right off it. Let me see what we got here. Oh yeah, that does look out better. Remember how not sharp that knife was when we started? Really. I hope this skull is worth saving for it. Get up a little bit and shine with the shot back too. Now what I'm doing now is I'm just peeling this front down. And go right down over the nose. Feeling the nose down. And I try to get most of the nose cartilage out while I'm in this phase. It's just easier to do. The nose really comes out the long nose. Got that. 
Now we're going to put it in. Lower lip. Now you got to be careful on your lower lip. You don't want to cut that off and leave the bottom lip hanging there. Attached to the skull. And you can do that pretty darn easy. him out of there. I'm going to turn him half inside out, put him in the fridge. That way he won't dry out. If I leave him the other, if I leave him the other way with just the, the flesh side, it'll be real dry in the morning and won't be able to flesh it very good. So we'll leave it just like this and then uh, get that in the morning. I'll talk to you in the morning.